Uh, welcome everybody to the annual meetings business session. Um, I'm going to I'm going to roll right into uh, the agenda items. Uh, first up um, is committee consent or approval of the agenda. Uh, does anybody have anything additions or deletions or questions around the agenda? And seeing no hands, uh, the agenda is approved by consensus. And then the approval of the proceedings from the August 2020 meetings. Anybody have any uh, questions, additions, deletions for those proceedings? And seeing no hands, uh, they are approved by consensus. Um, item number three is public comment. Is there any member of the public that uh, has comments for the business uh, for the business committee, for the full commission? Not hearing anybody chime in, no hands. Great, we're gonna move right on to item number four, which is review and consider the approval of the 2021 action plan. Um, uh, we have um, a significant, well, a, a big chunk of time scheduled for this. Um, I wanna make sure that we are able to do a good review, but if we could just be, um, uh, hit the highlights and then if we need to get any details, somebody can please raise your hand as the presentations are being made. So I'll turn it right over to uh, Bob Beal. Thanks, Pat. I think we'll, we'll go through our kind of regular format where each staff person will go through their section. And as you said, just hit the highlights and we'll pause after each goal to uh, see if there's any questions, additions, deletions, that sort of thing. So uh tony kearns is the the first one with goal one the fishery management section if you're if you're ready to go pat yeah please right. proceed okay and maya if you'll just pull up and do your best to scroll through with me um the action plan um that would be great thanks so much all right so we're gonna start off um with in bold are the new items that are coming through for each of the species. And as you recall, we've split the um, species groupings into high priority and medium low priority in terms of staff workload and focus for commissioners. For American eel, we're going to um, continue on with the American eel um, benchmark stock assessment and peer review, which will be completed in 2022, as well as monitor the international action on the Convention of International Trade for Endangered Species through communications with Fish and Wildlife Service. For lobster, we will work on management actions to the benchmark stock assessment, as well as the resiliency document for Gulf of Maine. Um, and in addition, the board added a white paper on the use of trackers, in particular for the focus on federal water for lobster vessels fishing in federal waters. And we'll need to add that bullet into the document specifically. Um, for Atlantic pairing, we will finalize and implement addendum three once the um, amendment eight has been finalized. If we need to, we will respond to that amendment that the council, NOAA Fisheries is working to do a final rule for. We'll also follow the work of New England Fishery Management Council for framework seven, which is spawning protections in Georgia's Bank and North Nantucket Shoals, as well as framework eight, which is the specifications and incidental catch limits and respond if necessary. For Atlantic Menhaden, we'll review the amendment three quota allocations and initiate a management action if necessary as well as initiate the benchmark assessment to be completed in 2022 for striped bass we will work on draft amendment seven to ensure stock rebuilding and address all of the current fishery management issues as talked about earlier this week and complete the 2021 stock assessment and address the findings, um, most likely amendment seven if necessary. The board will need to discuss um, once we know what kind of recreational catch estimates we will have to determine if this stock assessment will be completed or not. For black sea bass, um, we'll work with the council on this, this um, 
some of the items here will also apply to summer flounder and scup and I'll note which ones. Um, but we will work with the Mid Atlantic Council on finalizing an addendum or an amendment for commercial recreational allocation, taking into uh, it's our addendum, their amendment on the commercial recreational allocation, taking into account calibrated recreational estimates. And we will also develop in coordination with the council an action to address recreational form. And this will also apply to summer flounder and scup. We will finalize the commercial state allocations um, through addendum 33 and contribute data for the 2021 management track assessment and the 2022 research track assessment. And the track um, for bluefish, we will finalize the amendment that is looking at the commercial and recreational allocation that we are working on with the Mid-Atlantic Council. This includes the calibrated estimates and goals, objectives, quota transfers, and rebuilding programs. We will, and the recreational reform addendum also applies to bluefish. I don't think I said that before. We will also review the effectiveness of the current fishery independent data requirements and evaluate an optimal range and sample size for age data that is required and necessary for the stock assessment. Bluefish will also undergo a management track assessment in 21 and a research track in 2022. Horseshoe crab will continue the arm revisions for SCUP. Both of these actions have already been addressed in under the black sea bass. And for summer flounder, the only additional thing that I haven't mentioned is developing in coordination with the Mid-Atlantic Council management action, um, a, a, a management strategy evaluation regarding the benefits of minimizing discards and converting discards into landings in the recreational sector. For TOG, we'll work on the 2021 stock assessment update and consider any management responses if necessary in the fall. And then moving on to the medium low priority species for both Atlantic Croak and SPOT will be implementing the measures triggered from the 2020 traffic light analysis as outlined in addendum three and discussed earlier in this week. Coastal sharks, there will be a CDAR for the black tip shark stock assessment and we'll consider management response um, if necessary and work closely with HMS for that. We'll also monitor the activities of HMS specifically with regards to HMS Amendment 14, which is uh, looking at annual catch limits and accountability measures. If there's anything that we need to respond to for this, we will take those up. For COBIA, we'll be implementing the addendum that we got approved today, which is a revision to the allocations and some of the de minimis rule measures. For Jonah Crab, we'll be implementing all of the data elements um, to that improve the data collection and characterization of the fishery and continue to work with all of our partners to make sure that these data elements are include, um, incorporated. We will also identify the data that's available, its limitations, the uncertainties around it, and make recommendations for stock assessment approach, approaches for this fishery. We have yet to have a coastwide stock for Jonah Crab. For Northern Shrimp, we'll conduct a stock assessment update and set specifications. Um, the moratorium that has been in place for the last three years sunsets at the end of 2021. We'll also continue to explore long-term management options given the environmental changes in the Gulf of Maine and it's the shrimp's depleted stock status. Red Drum will continue to work on the simulations um, for, for, for future use of stock assessment models. For shad and river herring, we'll continue to respond to the 2020 American Shad Benchmark Stock Assessment. Through this response, we'll identify improvements to the fishery management plan with regards to recreational catch or recreational management systems with um, low harvest and high abundance um, indexes, looking at sustainable fishery management plans alternatives, 
as well as incorporation of assessment information in this SFMPs. We'll also have work on completing the SHAD updates to the SHAD habitat plans. These are just updates, not entire new habitat plans. For spiny dogfish, we'll be contributing data and participating in the 2022 research track assessment. And for winter flounder, we'll work collaboratively with the New England Fishery Management Council to respond to the management track assessment. Things that are cross-cutting between multiple departments at the commission include raising awareness of COVID-19 impacts to MRIP's availability, availability to produce catch estimates. We'll also raise awareness to uh, MRIP's data standards and impacts to the commission's FMP and stock assessments. We'll be working to seek ways within our existing management structure to address the concerns of the recreational community with regard to commission managed and jointly managed species. We'll also be participating in and provide administrative support for scenario planning activities to address changes in stocks and fisheries due to climate and fisheries governance. And this is a collaborative effort along the coast with all three of the councils as well as um, GARFO and the Science Center. And then lastly, we'll evaluate COVID impacts on the 2020s fishery dependent and fishery independent data collection and develop strategies to mitigate impacts to the stock assessments as well as um, the FMPs. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Uh, thanks, Tony. I see Tom Foti. You have your hand up, Tom. Uh, yeah, by mistake. Okay, thank Tom. Any uh, anybody any have any questions for Tony? Seeing none, we'll go right on to the next portion. And before you go on, Maya, if there's a way to try to fill the whole screen, it's I think it's hard for some people to read the text. Maybe one more hit. Perfect. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. This is Pat Canfield. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, go ahead, Pat. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thanks, Maya, for scrolling through the plan. Um, goal two covers all of our fisheries research, surveys, and stock assessment uh, activities for 2021. Um, first up, under the scientific committee activities. We plan to evaluate and pursue expansion of coastwide stock assessment capacity um, through either a new hire or uh, strengthening capacity at the Northeast Fisheries Science Center to work on ASMFC assessments. Uh, the second highlight is to continue incorporating socioeconomic information in the management documents uh, through the work of our CES committee on economics and social sciences. Under data collection and the uh, regional surveys, under CMAP, uh, a program that's been in place for almost 40 years, um, just one minor change to collaborate with uh, the Southeast Coastal Ocean and Observing Association to potentially host the CMAP South Atlantic survey data. Under NEMAP, um, a few new additions. The first is to develop common methodology protocols for NEMAP surveys so that we are promoting consistent data collection across um, the various trawl surveys in the Northeast area. Um, in early 2020, before uh, the travel restrictions and the pandemic hit, uh, we conducted our first maturity staging workshop and so if and when travel um, resumes in 2021, uh, we hope to build on that success and, and host a second maturity staging workshop through the DMAP partners. Um, an additional workshop that would be valuable for the NEMAP uh, trawl survey community is a calibration workshop to develop common methods for how to conduct a calibration if and when uh, changes in vessels are needed. 
scrolling down uh, to the next page, um, we have initiated a project to develop a genetic sampling and analysis repository for shad and river herring in close collaboration with uh, the U.S. Geological Survey. And we highlight this project, but it's one of uh, many new projects that we have collaborated on with USGS over the past few years and look to further expand that partnership. Um, scrolling down to fisheries research, uh, just one quick hit on stock assessment modeling. Um, we just completed the 2020 uh, American Lobster Stock Assessment. One of the major recommendations for future assessments was to add time-varying uh, thermal habitat effects and growth to the catch at length model. And so we will continue to work with the group at the University of Maine and our stock assessment subcommittee uh, to develop the model further. Scrolling down to ecosystem-based management and changing ocean conditions, uh, we'll highlight a task from the executive committee to develop criteria for adding or subtracting states from fishery management boards if and when an individual stocks distribution changes. Um, and this is something that the Management and Science Committee will take up. And then finally, under competing ocean uses, um, we added a task to explore opportunities to characterize the geographic extent of fisheries using trackers as a tool. So I will stop there. Those are the highlights for our fisheries science program. Great, thanks, Pat. Does anybody have any questions for Pat? John Clark. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Pat. Um, just want to get back to one of the first comments you made about incorporating the uh, socioeconomic data into assessments. When might we start seeing that? I mean, a good example is just the other day with the Menhaden uh, vote or the, the issue about uh, changing the TAC there, uh, we heard a big concern from the advisory panel about the economic impacts of lowering the TAC, uh, yet during the, the material I saw and during the conversation, we didn't have anything concrete about that as to what different lowering the TAC levels would do to uh, the economics of our fishing public here. And just curious as to when we might start seeing more uh, input into these documents from the Economic and Social Sciences Committee. Thanks. Thank you, John. Um, it's really a, a multi-pronged approach. Um, the first is through the members of the SAS, or the Committee on Economic, Economics and Social Sciences. Um, our coordinator, Sarah Murray, has done a, an excellent job of getting the various committee members uh, assigned to different species. Um, and they have had a, a longstanding role to participate in PDT meetings, some TC meetings where there are um, you know, management and regulation discussions with socioeconomic aspects. And so that's one of the most direct ways to have the, the socioeconomic experts involved in those committee and uh, team discussions to provide input and advice um, one of the, I guess this, the second aspect is the risk and uncertainty uh, policy that has been in development and we hope to finalize soon, uh, as was raised earlier this week. Um, but again, uh, Sarah and the CES committee have been uh, working pretty hard on developing uh, criteria and scoring ranges for the socio socioeconomic uh, questions and elements of that risk and uncertainty policy. Um, so. The intent is to have that be a more formal type of input on socioeconomics for your decision making. Um, and the third, um, the third piece is that the FMP, FMPs have had socioeconomic information, but we can probably do a better job of, of rounding that out. Um, often we're limited by the socioeconomic data that are available um, coastwide. Um, we've we've worked closely with ACCSP to make use of what they have in their databases. Um, but we often run into the hurdle of, of that type of data being fairly limited. Uh, but we are spending a fair amount of time on it 
um, through the sales committee in the last couple of years. Thanks, Pat. But I'm just, uh, Menhaden in particular, to me, this was a pretty glaring example where the science that we're using for the, the single species is excellent uh, for the assessment there. For the ERP, I'd say it was more speculative. And yet we didn't have any, uh, there could have been, to me, pretty simply done what the costs might be you know, even just a ballpark range as to what we'd be looking at for our, uh, for example, our fisheries that use menhaden for bait, what reducing the tack to a certain level, how it might impact that. I mean, it doesn't seem like it would be that difficult if we could manage this species now set attack based on some fairly speculative science. It seems like we could have some kind of numbers there. Thanks. Great, thanks, John. Uh, Jason McNamee. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, so, Pat, the very, uh, thanks for the presentation, Pat. The very last thing you brought up, I, I was just wondering if you could uh, give a little more detail on that I, I hadn't heard about. It was the, the tracker one. Just curious as to what that is. Sure, um, the, I think there's, a couple of purposes, um, and Tony alluded to it under goal one, um, and, and perhaps our chairman can speak to it too. And, uh, it was a task that was raised um, during the initial review of the action plan through the Administrative Oversight Committee. Um, but my understanding is it relates to uh, understanding where lobster fishing is taking place um, as it may relate to offshore wind development, uh, and perhaps for other purposes, but that's as much as I, I can say about it. Okay, thanks. Any... Pat, I don't know if it's, oh, sorry, I was just gonna say the, the board came up with a more specific task and work group at the meeting. And so that's why I brought it up under, under lobster before here, we were sort of thinking, trying to think um, towards the future of trackers and how they could improve in a more timely fashion information related to fishing for fisheries that we don't have good data for, Jay. I so see, so track, trackers on boats. Yep. Trackers on boats is what you're talking about. I gotcha, thanks. Yep, yep, great. Any other questions for Pat? Seeing no hands, why don't uh, we go on to the next presenter? Thank you, Pat. This is Jeff White covering goal three for ACCSP. Um, if you mind if you'd scroll down just a little bit, the, the top parts are about the same. Uh, the bold item on a continuing basis uh, that we're, we've highlighted there is we, we've moved it from last year, uh, FISMA is the Internet Security Act. Um, we moved it from a, its own item to moving up as an ongoing activity. Uh, really, this is a, a significant ongoing staff time and costs for software tools and annual external reviews of our security status. Uh, that's part of uh, having our, our FISMA authority to connect to the, the six different federal systems that we have, so uh, that we work with. So that's why it's moved up into our continuing item. Under program management, uh, the, there are some updated items here that are not uh, vastly uh, different, you know, the, of things that you've heard before, integrating with the commission's communications plan, of course, uh, selecting and monitoring our ranked proposals and projects. Um, and the update to the Atlantic implementation plan is really on a, about a five year cycle, uh, we're four years in at the moment. And this is to include coastal priorities for uh, projects and direction that is then used by an in input by the states and the councils and used by MRIP to address their kind of long-term activities and funding priorities. So that's a, a big item for us, the REC Tech Group and, and ACCSB to update this year. On a, if you could scroll down for fisheries dependent data collection, Maya. Thank you. Um, 
really will continue our support for partner implementation of the tools uh, that we have out there. But the, the middle section here is really changing the focus from the redesign and prioritizing not as much on the trips aspect, but the dealer reporting, uh, the dealer landings reporting. And so that's moving the, the safest management system. The switchboard is a, is a tool that we use to make that more flexible and updating the end user tools uh, to be able to um, have some really visible components of what the safest redesign of the database and, and processing standpoints are doing uh, for the end users and, and those flexibility tools. So electronic dealer reporting will be our focus for um, improving those tools next year. Um, and also some of the items below support that in terms of the participant and permit database design and uh, the trip management system, the idea of uh, having a unique trip ID that is is shared and, and coordinates things such as uh, the actual trip report, the dealer report, uh, potentially observer or biological information as well. My, if you move down under data standards, the title of this one did change. We added the word standards in here along with distribution and use. So in the data warehouse, uh, there's continued focus to incorporate new data elements, redesign uh, the user interface there, improve the content on biological data and recreational estimates. Uh, that means better aligned tools with what MRIP is showing on their website, as well as um, finding ways to support our partners in, in the presentation of those data fields. And um, the under recreational fisheries, the big points uh, there are really to evaluate, is begin evaluating the utility and standards for private angler voluntary mobile application data. And that's uh, a very wordy bullet item, uh, but focuses on finding out where those private angler apps are best utilized for their data um, and what are the common data fields that could be recommended. And so that's defining the appropriate uses to guide stakeholder expectations. So um, are these apps going to provide supplementary information? Uh, is it, how might it be used relative to uh, MRIP, relative to the assessment process, relative to uh, other processes? And so uh, that's really trying to capture the best guidance there uh, is what the, the bullet is about. And of course, that involves developing the core fields for data collection and, uh, and things that would be consistent and useful across the source, of, source applications. And the, the last item under REC Fisheries is really to continue an ongoing task, which was the ability to more fully incorporate four higher logbooks into the catch statistic. So um, with the additional federal four higher logbooks uh, and HMS regulations, uh, sorry, not regular, reporting um, incorporation in some of these tools, how does that factor into the way the four higher estimates are being created? Um, and so that's that's a methodology that's really part of the implementation plan. It's also part of uh, something that Rec Tech is, is developing. So with that, I'll stop uh, and ask for any questions. Thank you, Jeff. Any questions for Jeff? Uh, Seeing none, I think you're off the hook, Jeff, and we can move on to goal four. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and goal four is the commission's law enforcement committee goal. Uh, and Maya, if you could just scroll down a little bit more here. And you'll, that's perfect. And you'll see that we don't have any bolded tasks really for the law enforcement committee. Most of the work that that they do is looking at our FMPs and new management measures to those FMPs and reviewing and providing input to the boards on enforcement for those measures. And so while those are new every, while we propose new plans every year, 
the uh, specifics are unknown until it comes up. So we'll just continue on with that and note that the law enforcement committee will continue to engage with the lobster board on offshore enforcement activities as well as engage with eel enforcement activities. That's all I got. Thanks, Tony. Any any questions on that goal? Seeing no hands, we'll move on to goal five. Okay, thank you. Uh, goal five covers all the activities for our habitat program and the Atlantic Coastal Fish Habitat Partnership. Uh, just a couple of uh, highlights for 2021. Under uh, the integrate category to complete the fish habitats of concern descriptions to be considered for integration into the commission's fishery management plans. And secondly, um, under ACFIP, uh, there have been a number of projects since the partnership started uh, over a decade ago. And uh, we want to collect information on the long term success of ACFIP's on the ground conservation projects. Uh, for to to understand um, improvements to habitat after the projects are completion are completed. That's all under goal five. Great, thank you, Pat. Any questions on goal five? Seeing no hands, we'll move on to the next goal. Thanks, Pat. Uh, this goal is regarding stakeholder uh, and public support for the commission. Under uh, increasing public understanding and support, we are going to be building upon our Fisheries Management 101 webpage. If you all haven't seen it, be sure to check it out under our Fisheries Management Program page. Uh, we'll be turning that into a primer uh, for folks to use and distribute to their stakeholders um, as needed. Uh, we are going to look at a couple of different ways of highlighting our uh, current status of the stocks. Uh, we currently have uh, the stack stock, stock status package, uh, but we'll see if we can refine that a bit more uh, on our plate as well as to update the guide to fishery science and stock assessments that was first developed in 2009 um, and it's pretty dated in some areas so we're going to work on uh, bringing that up to speed. Uh, for 2021 we identified um, a couple of issues that we are going to focus uh, increased uh, outreach on and these include uh, development of the striped bass amendment, uh, implementation of uh, the circle hooks requirement uh, as part of that amendment, uh, or as part of Addendum 6, as well as uh, continue to work on uh, outreach on uh, the use of ERPs. Uh, regarding stock assessments uh, upcoming for 2021, we will put together some outreach materials on the upcoming uh, horseshoe crab arm benchmark assessment, and we'll do, as, as time allows, uh, do updates and overviews for management track assessments for striped bass, bluefish, black sea bass, and summer flounder. Under uh, new technologies, we're going to do some upgrading and updating of our website, uh, make it uh, HTTPS compliant, find ways to increase uh, uh, accessibility and uh, user friendliness, and add new pages for ERPs as well as climate change effects on managed species. We're going to continue to focus on using webinars, videos, story maps to engage and inform the public about uh, current activities for all our programs. Uh, if you could scroll down a bit more, Maya, to the rest of it. Under media relations and networking, um, uh, I, I, we've, I've been working on an implementation or I've been working on a communications plan to fully integrate all our departments and coordinate out outreach activities. Part of that plan will be to develop a baseline, so we will be conducting a survey of all our products and tools and uh, to get a sense of how effective they are and uh, where we can make um, further progress uh, in the future. 
And the only last thing is we um, uh, do coordinate uh, this Atlantic Coast Fisheries Communication Group, which is uh, outreach folks from all the states and the councils and the federal agencies we work with. Uh, we we'll hope to have a meeting in 2021 to talk about some shared um, communications issues and how we can move forward on uh, joint messaging. That's it for goal six. Thank you, Tina. Any questions for Tina? John Clark. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Tina. Uh, the Management 101 webpage is really nice. I just was curious as to whether uh, ASMFC has worked with MRIP at all about uh, getting the public to understand the new MRIP better because uh, there's a ton of dissatisfaction among anglers with the with the recreational data that's coming in. You know, obviously the new MRIP is supposed to be an improvement, but because of the impact it's had on several assessments, I think there's a lot of distrust of it in the angling public and a lot of comes out at hearings, you know, how little people think of MRIP. So I'm just curious as to whether you yeah, have any plans to explain that data on the ASMFC website? It is uh, in part captured under um, goal one in terms of increasing awareness um, on cross-cutting issues regarding MRIP. Um, I know the Mid-Atlantic Council uh, developed a MRIP page. Uh, we haven't discussed it at the staff level although both Jeff and I and Tony and Bob are all involved in MREP uh, communications at some level, but that's certainly something we could discuss and potentially address um, if, if that uh, is the desire of the board or the business session. John, is that answer your question or do we oh, need no, thank you. No, that, that's fine. I was, like I said, I was just curious. And, you know, as I said, I just think the more, the more avenues to get the information out to the public, hopefully the better understanding and eventual acceptance of it. But as, like I said, as of right now, there's a lot of distrust of that data. Yeah. 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 I think. I think those type of conversations are certainly going to play out over time with several species management boards, but I appreciate that question. Uh, Tom Foti. Yeah, thank you, Pat. I mean, we've all been virtually meeting for the last eight months, nine months, and we should basically look at how we, how we could use this tool to better interact with the public. Maybe having like a commission open, open house one day where we have different presentation on different species from the staff in charge of those species and have people asking questions and things like that. Because usually it's when we basically reach out to the public, it's, oh, we're going to have a public hearing, we're going to have this, but maybe it's an open house to get acquainted in a, in a more friendly atmosphere where we're not basically, you know, cutting back to quarters or doing something else. Thanks, Tom. John, your hand's still up. Did you have you, did you have a comment or is that an old hand? Nope, must have been an old hand. Any other questions for Tina? Seeing none, uh, let's move on to goal seven. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is Bob. I'll take that one. Um, goal seven is our legislative activities, and it's really most of it is the ongoing activities that, that Deke and I engage in. Um, you know, working with congressional offices and uh, working with a number of you guys to, to bring you up to Capitol Hill and you and a lot of you do it independently interacting with your congressional offices. There's a couple bolded items if you scroll down a teeny bit, Maya. Um, the first one is, you know, that the um, there's a there's an election coming up, apparently, and we're going to react to that. Uh, they're, they're, you know, no one knows the outcome of the election, but we'll see what um, who we need to react to and who we need to start interacting with after that election. Um, the legislative committee has been revamped and is up and running and doing well this year. And, and we've uh, got a bit of a number of activities there that that group is contemplating working on. And the idea is to continue their momentum into 2021. Um, the, the one of the big items that 
is, is being talked about is should we or when should we uh, seek reauthorization of the Atlantic Striped Bass Act and Atlantic Coastal Act? Um, I don't think anyone, I haven't heard of any significant changes that anybody wants to those acts, but they haven't been reauthorized for a while and, and the authorization level um, could be increased. And I think that would benefit the states as we try to seek more funds to support commission activities. Um, and, you know, we're, we also want to seek federal appropriations for a number of surveys that are important to uh, the member states and the commission, as well as the horseshoe crab activity. So those are the highlights of um, our legislative activities. And, you know, we'll continue to monitor bills and pending legislation on Capitol Hill, Hill and share all that information with you. And uh, as any one of you want to go up to Capitol Hill or interact with your uh, state's delegations, let us know. We're happy to do that. So happy to answer any questions, Pat. Great, Bob. Thanks for that. Um, Tom Foley. After the last congressional election, I asked Bob Beal and Congressman Plone to host a meeting for all, because we had a lot of new delegation. We had almost four, four, five or four, I think it was five mem new members of the con uh, New Jersey congressional delegation. And they asked Congressman Plone, because the, the Commerce Committee had a big office, that we could host the whole delegation to get briefed by Bob Beal and a few other people on fisheries and how it went. And I don't know how Bob felt, but I thought it was important that this is how we reach out to the whole delegation, like from New Jersey. And we do this with other states. I mean, it's, you basically pick out the uh, congressional person that in your in your state that can basically host a meeting like this and bring all the delegations so you at least get in, uh, informed, not just the one person or two persons that deal with fisheries in the state, but all the delegation that you can fit in the room. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Richie White. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> if the uh, commission uh, makes the decision that the commission is in good shape financially, uh, separate from the surveys uh, that need funding, um, I think that that, um, and I don't know if that would be something that, um, there, that there would be a decision made for that, or um, <clears throat> my, my thinking is to when we go to the delegations, we we almost always go asking for money, and it would be great to go and say the commission is okay for now, you know, outside the the individual issues uh, surveys that we need money for, so. Um, so anyway, that that's that's my sense. So if I, I don't know if uh, there is a decision made um, that we are in that situation, um, and if so, then I think that's a message we should uh, put forward. Yeah, th thanks, Richie. I think um, as we get into um, you know, late late fall, early winter, we'll certainly be having more conversations about appropriations. Uh, that council and commission line uh, has been one that I think all of uh, our individual states have focused on as far as continuing to support. Um, they'll certainly, it, it, it certainly helps when you say, we're in pretty good shape on this line, but you know, but we, we're obviously gonna have more areas we're gonna have to refocus on, especially considering uh, all of the uh, impacts to the individual state budgets, but uh, I think your point's well taken. Any other questions on this topic? Not seeing any other hands. Uh, Bob, is there any more goals? Have we got one more to go? Yeah, one more. The finance administration, Laura's got it. Yeah. Laura, you're up. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I will make, try to make up time because basically the majority of the goals or tasks under goal eight are ongoing, um, making sure the commission is run well, run smoothly, and that and this involves our grants and budgets and all that. Um, the one area that we um, did put in a lot of new tasks in this year was um, due to the pandemic and what we're learning from the whole teleworking situation and where we need to bolster our um, ability to do that. So I'm not going to read through all of these because I think you all can read them very well. Um, the um, thing that I would point out under human resources is that 
I'm going to work on pursuing a hiring a finance administration deputy director next year. Um, and I think that the rest of the um, tasks are pretty clearly outlined. May I answer any questions? Any questions for Laura? Seeing no hands going up, um, I think the fact that Richie brought up the uh, issues around finance and that the commission continues to be doing uh, very well financially um, remains, a, r remains a direct link uh, back to you, Laura, and the work that you're doing with your team. Um, so it certainly probably reflects the fact that we're not getting a lot of questions. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Tony. Um, this is an uh, a, a final action item um, where so we will need uh, we will need a motion to approve the um, 2021 action plan or maybe I should be turning it back over to Bob um. Well, I think Pat, if, if anyone's willing to make that motion, we can get it up, and uh, you know, then then the group can vote. Um, Bill Anderson, are you making the motion? I am, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And so we got a second from Tom Foley. I am. We'll let him get it on the uh, get it on the screen for everybody. I think um, the uh, motion is pretty uh, self-evident here. Um, is there any discussion on the motion? Pat, I just want to let Maya know that the motion was by Bill Anderson and seconded by Tom Fody. Thank you, Tony. Thanks, Pat. Uh, seeing no hands going up, is there any objections to the motion? Hearing no objection, the motion passes. Thank you very much. The uh, item number five, oh, excuse me, let me get on the right agenda. Uh, yes, item number five is the election of the chair and the vice chair. I'll turn it over to Bob Beal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think it just, just a quick reminder, um, each year the commission elects uh, chair and vice chair from its member ranks. And uh, however, our tradition has been to uh, have chairs and vice chairs serve two year terms. So we're at the, the end of the first year for Mr. Kelleher as chair, Mr. Woodward as vice chair, uh, but we do need to go through the election process to uh, verify their second year. So um, the, the there is a nominations committee and Jim Gilmore is the chair of that committee. So I will go ahead and call on Jim for nominations for the chair of the commission, please. Thanks, Bob. And I'll, I'll go ahead just uh, for everyone. The um, nomination committee considered myself, uh, Cherie Patterson and Jim Estes. Um, our normal process actually been to reach out to you the last couple of weeks to see if there were additional nominations. Um, however, um, I was a little, I was out of commission the last couple of weeks. So, uh, that didn't happen completely my fault. Um, so what we do want to have an opportunity to see if there are any, um, nominations from the floor. Um, my only comment on my last two weeks is if you haven't gotten the shingles vaccine, do it on the way home today. Um, <laughs> the, um, uh, for, first, essentially we have, um, good news in that both, um, um pat and bot and uh sputter are both uh willing to continue on so their um names are up for nomination so i was thinking bob that we would take these at one at a time i'll offer for, to the uh to the floor anyone who would like to make a nomination for chairman for the upcoming year and if you want to make a nomination please raise your hand and uh, bob i think can check to see if there are any hands raised Actually, Tony, are there any uh, hands up? I don't. Making sure no one has their hand up. Okay. So, Jim, it sounds like there's no additional nomination. So, do you want to go ahead and nominate uh, Mr. Kelleher uh, for re-election for a second year? 
Yeah, so on behalf of the nominating committee, I nominate Pat Kelleher as chair of the ASMFC, effective at the end of the annual meeting. Thank you, Jim. And since that's on behalf of a committee, there's no need for a second. Um, we'll try to do this the, the efficient way. Um, are there any objections to having Mr. Kelleher serve a second year as chair of the ASM, as chair of the ASMFC? Sorry, Bob, I keep muting myself. No, no hands are raised. No hands. Well, uh, congratulations, Pat. It appears you have been unanimously elected as chair for uh, a second year. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate that. And uh, Jim, do you want to follow up with um, to see if there's any other nominations for vice chair or if not uh, nominate Mr. Woodward for a second term? Yes, yeah, so back to the board. Um, are there any additional nominations uh, to um, Spud Woodward or any, uh, I'm sorry, is there any additional nominations beyond Spud for vice chairman of the ASMFC for the upcoming year? Please raise your hand and let Tony know. I see no additional hands raised, Jim. Okay, then on behalf of the nominating committee, I nominate Spud Woodward as vice chair of the ASMFC, effective at the end of the annual meeting. Excellent, thank you. And again, it's a motion from uh, on behalf of a committee, uh, therefore no need for a second, and we'll try the same voting technique. Are there any objections to having Mr. Woodward serve as vice chair for a uh, second year? I see no additional no hands raised excellent thank you tony so by uh, again by unanimous vote uh, or unanimous consent spud you are the vice chair for a second term and uh, it's been really great working with with pat and spud there's no no two greater uh leadership guys to go through a pandemic with than both these guys so uh, <laughs> thank you thank you for everything and jim um you know i uh, hope your shingles Hope you continue to recover from those. It sounds like it's been a it's been a rough grind for you for the last couple of weeks. So uh, hang in there. We hope you get better. Oh, and with that, you, Mr. Chairman, I think it's all yours. Great. Uh, I want to thank everybody again for the vote of confidence for Spud and I. Um, Spud, we we may have secretly been wishing for a coup. Um, uh, it has been quite a year with the pandemic. Um, and uh, I, I think, fr frankly, I think the fact that we're getting together at least from the administrative chair, uh, administrative commissioner's perspective, nearly weekly. Um, it allows us all to kind of have these broader conversations and help get through this together. So uh, again, I appreciate uh, appreciate the, uh, the the vote of support. Um, we'll, we'll let's let's finalize the business session here. Is there any other? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Tom Foley's hand just went up. Tom. Yeah, I, I sent an email to you, Bob. I just wanted to mention that we had, uh, this Sunday we lost one of our past commissioners. Uh, some, a lot of you will remember it, but it was George Howard. George Howard was director of Fish and Wildlife of the state of New Jersey. Was a uh, basically worked for the agency for 40 years. Uh, George was one of my mentors when I first got involved. Matter of fact, one of the reasons I'm here is because he taught me to do a lot of these jobs. And he also pointed out the fact that we need to work with other groups, like in New Jersey, the hunters and the fishermen are needed to work together. And when he retired at 65, he did not quit. He actually became president of the Federation and brought all these groups together in, a, in the New Jersey State Federation of Sportsmen Clubs and reorganized it. Uh, if you look at deer management and how it's been done nowadays, it is really up to George, because when George was appointed and got involved with uh, managing deer, he basically allowed for a doe hunt. Back before in the ancient times it was considered you didn't shoot you didn't shoot female deer. And he changed he changed that in New Jersey and before he was finished it was all over the country. He also trained the other directors that you've known from New Jersey, Bob McDowell, Dave Chandler, uh, Marty McHugh. He's got a long legacy of people he's trained in the division that some are still around. I just figured I'd let you know as I said, he was one of my mentors also back then. Thank you, Tom, for that. Um, 
where I think we're all we're all following the footsteps of a, of a lot of different people, um, and uh, many of them before us certainly uh, certainly have uh, created some uh, some big shoes to fill. So thanks for uh, bringing that forward. Um, one more point, Pat. He was also part of the greatest, you know, the greatest generation. And it was interesting because when I met those directors that were going on back there, they would all, a lot of them had said, like in the federal agencies, like Dick Rhodes and Rick, uh, Dick Schaefer and uh, Pete McClain, they all served in World War II. Uh, George was a Marine and hitting the beaches in, in the South Pacific. Uh, Pete McClain, who was the other uh, vice chairman of New Jersey, is a, a, a bomber pilot over in, in, in England. So they worked, they learned how to work together and they kept at it when they basically became directors and bring people in and try to get past our differences and our argumentative and get the lectures from him when I was younger. Hey, yeah, thanks for that, Tom. Um, we're gonna uh, we're gonna move on. Is there any other business to be brought before the full commission? Not seeing any hands go up. Um, we were to go into recess um, and then consider non-compliance findings uh, after the policy board. Uh, but seeing there are thankfully no non-compliance findings, I think it, uh, a motion to um, adjourn would be um, would be uh, a good thing to hear right now. And then we can move back on to the policy board. Doug Hamus, motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second by Sheree. Uh, any objections to adjourning? Seeing no hands. Thank you very much. I appreciate everybody.